Shay here from Guardrail. This is the Hard Whale Monthly Roundup, July 2021. This month was probably the slowest and uh, less goodest on uh, albums released, but there's still some good stuff. If you haven't watched before, I give you the best music from the entire month so you don't have to go scrounge around and find the stuff yourself. Alphabetical order, no rankings, just good music. First up in the highlights, Bitter Pill, Predator Emulates Prey. Starting off the list is some ferocious up-tempo hardcore with great guitar tone. That'll almost always be enough to pull me right in. With hearing this EP and the demo that they did before this one, I'm ready to hear what they can do on full length. Next up is Fantasy World Demo. This is a brand new band out of Detroit that sounds like it's straight out of like the late 80s. Um, don't know much about this project, but I do know that it's not long enough. It's, uh, songs go by blisteringly fast, and I need a lot more of this. This is really good. Uh, next up is my highlight of the month. Final Gasp, Haunting Whisper. Grab your candles and jack-o'-lanterns, because this band's a little spooky. I'm so glad Triple B dropped this so I could find it, like a big big enough label that like, it came across. Uh, this is basically what Sam Hain would sound like if they came out today. It kind of just sounds like Sam Hain in general. This has been basically on repeat since I first heard it. Uh, it's my most played thing of like the last couple months, and I think it's in my top of the last half of the year too at this point. Spooky synths, Danzig vocals, watery sounding guitars. It's got everything I could want in it, and I think it's my favorite release of the year at the moment. Fulci, the Italian death metal horror kings. Uh, they come back with another really good album, this time basically teamed up with TV Crimes for the latter half of the album. I really didn't care too much for the TV crime stuff, maybe because it was all in a row. I do wish it was like interspersed throughout the album. Like, kind of like how Tropical Sun had like more of their like sample song, sample song, sample song. I wish it was the TV crimes full GT, like back and forth to keep the vibe changing more. But uh, other than that, it was still really good. Just not as good as the, the last couple releases. Ghost Mane and Scarlord. Uh, they just dropped like a little mini split, and I only found out about it last second. And it's they mesh together very well. I mean, it makes sense, but like even better than I thought it would. And I think they should team up some more because they really felt like a duo, and they could be like a project that they could just keep going at with. And I would like to see like a full length or at least a couple more releases with them both on it together. It's good to see like Ghost Mane's you know vocal range, but also add on top of it someone else's. Just to add more, it's just a lot of variety in the short songs there were. <laughs> Lucid Express. Lucid Express. The debut album from this, like, chugazy poppy band, uh, it hit hard and had me zoning right out, which is perfect for that. Uh, <laughs> the waves of the guitars and vocals. It was very, it's exactly what I want out of like a shoegazy type stuff. And uh, I can't say enough about how like strong this is for like a, just a debut. Like, it's definitely something I'm gonna keep my eye on for all of their future releases. One Scene Unity, Volume 2. I can't say it stacks up exactly to Volume 1 for me, but it's, if you want a bunch of new hardcore with a little variation in the genre of it, then you're going to get it right here. My favorite tracks came from Mind Force, Invoke, Dead Heat, Pain of Truth, Cruelty, and Year of the Knife. Um, the rest, there's some good tracks throughout the entire thing though. Give it a shot. If you like hardcore at all, just listen to it. It's short too. Pac-Man the Movie, Pac-Man the Movie 2, Eat Lives, very chaotic, very good math board. Strength 
Structures, none of the above. So Structures hasn't released anything in like seven years. So they dropped this EP, I didn't know what to expect, and it is my favorite thing they've ever done. Uh, I liked some of their older stuff, but I never liked it as much as like volumes or other stuff in that same area. But this, this was really good. It makes me a lot more excited for this band. I want to see them like continue and not take seven years to release their next project. Now Finally, for the top of the month, is Victims, Volume 4, Numb the Ache. Uh, shout out to Evan. With this fourth installment, the new metalcore band takes their influences and keeps them right on the sleeves, and I like the tone a lot more on this album than the last one. The production on this is, it's a lot more raw. It feels like you're hearing a band more like, almost like, really well live. Uh, because the last album, my biggest problem was that it sounded a little bit too well produced, but this one's just right there perfectly on the spot. Um, this album, the energy is pretty high and it's pretty good up until about the last three tracks I believe and around there that's where it starts to slow down. It does lose me a little bit there. It's not bad, it's just uh, the momentum drops off and I really just uh, don't really go back to those tracks. But if you love layered guitar tracks and Wii you're gonna you're gonna love this. <laughs> Here's some releases that I thought were good, just not great all the way through, but still check them out. Anika, Change. This is just good, easy listening music. Claro, Sling. So, not exactly what I expected from a Claro album. It's very acoustic driven. Um, I'm excited to see where it goes from this. I feel like this was a good first transition album into that stuff, but nothing like super stuck out to me. But, it was not bad. Cognitive, Malevolent Thoughts of a Haste and Extinction. That name's longer than I'm about to say about it. All right, groovy technical death metal. Cold Steel, Will of Spiritual Cleansing. I want this band to put out more because uh, it definitely interested me a bunch. It, sound, it reminds me of Power Trip, but if they were a lot more like hardcore, like if they were as hardcore as a lot of the lineups they were on. Real Sickies, Love is for Lovers. Uh, this album I thought was going to be one of my favorites until it kept going and it didn't have enough variety for me and it started to get old as I was listening to it. But the first couple tracks really got to me. It's like Ramonesy type punk. Space Jam, a new Legacy soundtrack. Uh, Sweetie, Cash Doll, Salt and Pepper, Lil Uzi Vert, and Brockhampton had the highlight tracks for me, especially the Lil Uzi Vert one. Uh, the Pump Up the Jam reboot <laughs> is really, uh, really one of my favorites of the year. Finally, Waves, Hideaway. I think this is the first time I've been disappointed by a Waves album, and it was very middle of the road. I, uh, I'm gonna go back to it a couple times, but I don't think it's gonna change much, uh, so that saddens me. Anyways, thanks for watching. What did I miss out on? Maybe I just didn't like it? Maybe I missed it? Let me know in the comments. What did you learn from this that you like now? Comment, like, subscribe, share to your friends. See you next month.